What's going on, guys? We are a day after New Comic Book Day, which means we got that Bolo show for you. That's right, the Be On The Lookout show. But we are going to talk about the books that were buzzing this week. That's right, we're talking about the first appearances. We're talking about Reader Buzz, Variant Buzz, and of course, we have a long-term play from Jack at the end. We are your hosts, Brian and Jack with some men's comics, but we're going to get into it right now, starting with those first appearances. And the first one we're talking about is that DC Black Label, The Dreaming Waking Hours number one. Who we got in this book, Jack? Well, we've got a new character called Ruin. And there's a lot of excitement over the Sandman universe, just really in general, um, because, you know, you've got the audio book that's going on right now with James McAvoy that people seem to be really excited about. There's the upcoming Netflix series. There's a whole new publishing initiatives going on. We're going to see a lot more of the Sandman uh, universe going forward. And I say the Sandman universe because that's what's important. Is it's more than just that original title. So these new characters, there's a lot of different space where they could kind of end up. And the upcoming crossover with the ever popular IDW Lock and Key that's going to be coming up. Which And the fact that that's now, we know that's going to be canon um, it, I think is exciting for both franchises. So a lot of reason really to be excited. This was a more kind of undercover first appearance that you started to hear people talking about late. Um, there's a 125 design variant incentive that people have been charging above ratio, like double ratio plus. I think Midtown had it for 60. So there's a lot of people kind of holding this one back. I don't think it was as heavily ordered as several of the other books. This is a big week for big books, just like last week, but maybe even on another level. So I think this one will kind of get a little bit under the radar, but it's definitely one to keep an eye out for. Yeah, I find it crazy for the longest time DC had stopped doing their incentive grants. They bring them back, and it seems like people just went into shell shock. Yeah. All their one in tri- all their one in twenty five seem to be going for for good money, especially on release. But that next one we're talking about is that Dark Knight's Death Metal Legend of the Dark Knights number one, which is a pretty big first appearance, right? Right, Robin King. Now this happens again. Last time. Scott Snyder told us that Dark Knight's uh, Metal, Dark Knight Metal uh, number two would be the first appearance of the Batman Who Laughs. And then it got kind of jumped by that Teen Titans 12 issue. Um, we see the same thing happening again. He told everyone to anticipate, uh, you know, Death Metal number three. And here we go with this one shot um, jumping the first full appearance. So this is going to be the book to get. And definitely lower printed than the, the um, uh, you know, you would expect to see from Dark Knight's Metal, Death Metal number three. So a lot of reason to be excited, especially if you believe long term in Robin King. I'm still not sure or sold, um, but nonetheless, it's been even undeniable for me. I had to make sure I, I, I was in on it early. Um, and then that 125 variant, you know. Dinosaur covers always kind of get people's attention and do well. Beautiful cover. Robin King featured right on the cover. Um, it's kind of a home run, but $400 right out the gate. Just impressive for an incentive. So the market is strong right now, Brian. If people believe in something, they are willing to pay for it. Yeah, and it's crazy because two months ago on SimpleMansComics.com, we talked about this book put that book up there saying that it was going to be the first appearance of Robin King because they had an interview on CBR.com, read that interview. They talked about how gruesome this character was and CBR even was saying, look for Robin King in this book. So we put that article up there highlighting that article and no one talked about it until like a week ago when people started putting spoiler images out all along. You could have pre-ordered it pre-FOC. That's right. We're going into the next one and sticking with Batman. We're going Batman number 96, and we get that first appearance of Clown Hunter. Right. Clown Hunter looks like a very cool character. You get him on the design variant, the one in 25, so you get a good idea of the look and design of the character. And, you know, this is a character who is out to kill the Joker. Um, And he's crazy, but crazy for good, right? So it's going to be really interesting to see where this character goes. Um, It's one of the more exciting first appearance characters and we're going to talk about kind of like the longevity view of this character when we talk during the long-term play the last one we have for the first appearance is we have that star wars bounty hunter number one second print 
We talked about it on the first print, but what we have a couple characters on this, right? That's right. There's a few new characters, new bounty hunters, and people are real bullish on bounty hunters in general with the popularity of the Mandalorian series. Great cover on this book as well. And it seems like the first print came out so long ago that this book almost feels like a fresh new book. People don't almost don't remember um, that first print. And the first print, number one, uh, one in 50 variant is red hot. So it's gotten a lot of attention during the break. So I think people were ready for this one. If you see this one for cover price, I would grab it. So there it is, guys. Those are the first appearances that came out this week. We're going to shift over right now into my favorite section, those Reader Buzz books. And here's a book we're going to talk about. This was actually in multiple sections of the Bolo list this week. And we're talking about that Horizon Zero Dawn number one. That's right. Big book. Um, the Peach Momoko variant definitely got the attention of the comic speculation community. And for good reason. It's a nice cover. And Peach Momoko is red hot. There's also the art germ cover, but there's a multitude of incentives going all the way up to one in 100. You're getting rare high ratio art germ, high ratio peach. I think these books in the heat behind this video game, um, this book is a ch one that has a chance because people were excited about this book already because of the peach cover, which is a open order variant. I think it'll be the cover you see, honestly, most commonly on the shelf on release day will be that peach cover. Some of the other covers may be tough to find. And the key will be, do video gamers jump on this book? If the video game community jumps on this book, this book could end up being one that does Witcher type numbers because the video game is selling. If there's interest in the comics, you know Hollywood right now is grabbing up video game properties left and right. They're grabbing up video game properties the same way they're grabbing up um, uh, comic properties. So. Keep an eye out for this. The first comic series from a very popular franchise and a lot of incentives to chase. So one to pay attention to. Yeah. If you haven't played this video game, especially on PlayStation 4, this is like one of the biggest releases that came out. The thing is, it's weird though, because this came out last year, right? They've right. even had like the greatest hits edition. They've had, you know, the digital download sales. Badass game. If you haven't played the game, I definitely recommend it. But we also got at that PlayStation 5 reveal, we have a new Horizon Zero Dawn. Well, not Horizon. We have a new Horizon game on the horizon. So be on the lookout for this. I think this will have some crossover appeal. As long as, the, as, long as those gamers are aware of it, the story in the game was so good that they're going to want to pick this book up as well. But the next one we're going to talk about for that reader bus is Empire Number 4. This is definitely the community list because I've been reading Empire and I'm I don't have any buzz behind it. Yeah, well, you know, the solicitation said a major character death. Um, there's a lot of buzz about this being the uh, possible kickoff for Immortal She-Hulk. And that alone has gotten people talking about this book. So solicitation plus speculation usually will equal buzz. But yeah, let us know in the comments. Did you guys pick up Empire number four? Did you join the story? Let us know what you think about this book, especially reader buzz and speculation buzz. But the last one we're talking about on the reader bus section is that vampire masquerade number one yeah brand new horror vampire story coming from vault comics this is their stronghold um these type of horror stories a lot of beautiful cover art that uh, the pope variant is awesome um david mack cover is awesome and then they come with uh, something new a 9.99 cover price foil cover definitely cool i love the vault team and their innovation to constantly come out with new products so this is one to pay attention to and i wonder about that foil variant especially if this book takes off because you know asking retailers to pay five dollars uh wholesale uh, and try to retail a book for $10 from a small press publisher that already isn't doing huge numbers. Um, I could see that having a really low print run. So we've covered first appearances. We just went through reader buzz. So that leaves us with those variant buzz books that people are talking about this week. So we're into the variant buzz. This is that shiny object that people go after, especially the Wednesday Warriors. And the first one we're going to talk about is Ice Cream Man number 20. We're talking about that Dr. Seuss homage. And we saw all over social media this week that, hey, this came out of left field. No one's been talking about this. Check this book out. And we're seeing it sell for, what, 20 bucks or so already on, on secondary market. And we're recording this Tuesday night. But there was someone that talked about that. There was actually two people that talked about it. 
pre-FOC, you know, the show that everyone hates people to talk about because you're telling about books before they hit FOC and letting people buy them up. Who are those people, Jack, and what is going on? That's right, Brian, because we talked about this book right here on the last call show, the pre-FOC show. Not only did we talk about it, it was one that we really highlighted. Brian, I got to give you credit. You spotted this thing out in the previews and immediately said, this is the type of book that pops. Homages, especially homages that feel like they're, they're um, outside of genre, are the type of homages that tend to have that kind of pop because everybody is familiar with Dr. Seuss. Everybody's familiar with, uh, you know, this book and to then create a variant um, that plays into it from a very like graphic book, right? This is a, a hard RR rated book. Um, and to then bring in a childhood story and play off of it, genius, uh, it, being issue number 20, it was one that we saw people sleeping on. Like you mentioned, Brian, $20 all day on eBay um, for pre-sale. And yeah, it's one that, you know, if you owned a retail shop and you were listening to us pre-FOC, you could have picked up all day for $2. If you were a, a if you're just a collector, you could have been hitting up your LCS and probably picked it up for $3 and change. Um, and that is why we love The Last Call Show, because we're able to let you guys know what we see happening. And every now and again, you know, we're, we're right about one of these things. And this is one we were definitely right about. And if you haven't been, but you're interested in watching that Last Call Show, that premieres every Friday night, 9 p.m. Eastern, on Superman's Comics, or available for replay anytime after that as well. But the next book we're going to talk about is this Thor late prints that came out, right? Yes, we talked about on several different programs here on the channel how hot not only late prints are, but everything Donny Cates is currently writing. And that Thor run is just red hot. So that they are going back. Marvel is reprinting over and over and over again all of those early issues, and for good reason. Um, it seems like one isn't quite getting reprinted as much because I think there's more of a supply of one out there, but two, three, four, five, they've been getting reprinted. We saw this week the release of a three and four reprint. Um, definitely got people's attention. With three, you get kind of a design variant look. With four, of course, that's that first kind of cameo appearance of the Black Winter, so people like that book. And we've seen what these especially key first appearances, um, what the late printings can go for. So I would keep an eye out for that number three. I like or the number four. I like that one better than number three. But either way, I think these books will be kind of under ordered because retailers still haven't gotten down with the fact that these late prints not only are hitting those readers who missed out on reader buzz series like this where everybody should be reading it. Um, and you may have missed out and the secondary market prices have eclipsed what you're comfortable paying for a floppy reader. You're not a trade reader. You're not a digital reader. So you're able to get these late printings. But then it's also hitting collectors cover art and with the way some of these books have spiked you're bringing in the, co the collector market the reseller market the speculation market and every other market so i think these books are going to continue to be hot yes which again you would have been aware of as well if you watched the last call show yes because we always make sure to hammer home and talk about those late printings and those are most often the books that people overlook and the next one to talk about is also a second print we're talking about that mighty morphin power rangers number 50 which is also a key issue right that's right, because we have the return of Lord Draken, who everybody's been talking Draken when it comes to these Mighty Morphin Power Ranger comics, but too many people don't actually read the series on a regular basis like you and I do. Draken's been gone. And now we get to see Draken come back after defeat, um, and he's kind of disheveled. He's not himself. He's not confident. He doesn't really know where he fits in this whole universe. And we know that there's going to be some things coming. Draken came back for a reason. The publishing team at Boom Studios brought him back for a reason. Um, there's, there's certainly going to be more story. We know that now uh, Kimberly Hart and the Ranger Slayer is sitting on his throne. And this cover we get for 50, the second print, shows an awesome kind of almost design style uh, variant cover of Draken in, with his kind of like disheveled look which is a far cry from the look that he shows on most covers, right? Powerful, 
Domini. Um, you can certainly see our cover by Steve Morris for Draken New Dawn number one, currently available, $24.99, 500 print limited uh, undressed copies, um, virgin as they are referred to on the secondary market. Um, available right now, simplemanscomics.com, as well as the 616comics.com. But you see in that cover how like powerful he looks. Very stark contrast from what you're seeing in this cover. I certainly think this one's going to be low printed. It's going to be under ordered. And as Draken Star continues to rise, this moment in comics is probably just going to be a very brief moment. And this could be the only depiction of him in this sort of former faction. I like this one long term, Brian. Yeah, I agree. I mean, we're both big Power Rangers fans, so I don't want to say like biased. And when I say Power Rangers fan, I'm more of the comic Power Rangers right. fan than the show. There's a big distinction there. I still like to watch the show, but we've talked about how so much better that comic book is. But that's going to lead us into the next one on the variant buzz and this is coming out a week before the actual book releases but we're talking about that seven secrets number one thank you variant right yeah and i know that this is going to be the one that gets me comments all over the place because people are going to be like seven secrets doesn't come out and i know that trust me we have a seven secrets variant available right now at simplemanscomics.com as well as the 616comics.com again 500 copy 24.99 all undressed or virgin uh covers by the great jung young Yoon. we're very excited about that series but while we're aware of the release date of that book the the stores were shipped their thank you variants ahead of time um, from Boom Studios. And you know how stores are. Once they get something in hand, they're going to sell it. They're not going to wait. Midtown sold theirs for $88. So we're going to see more and more st stores putting them on the secondary market. This is something to pay attention to, something to be on the lookout for, because a store may not be aware of the secondary market of this book. They may put it out for cover price. We'll see some of that. We'll see stores put it out undervalued. Um, the market is going to get set on this. Also, it kind of creates this really weird situation, Brian, where if Seven Secrets takes off and becomes this really big book, will people care that this book was released a week prior to the book's release? Will they put added value in that? Is that something that's going to trigger the secondary market? I don't know, but it's definitely something to report on. It's something to, to be on the lookout for because if you hit your LCS today and you weren't aware of that and you missed out and you're going to hit it to tomorrow or sometime over the weekend. This is something to check on. Ask your LCS owner, did you get a um, Seven Secrets variant? And check out what they're selling it for because it could be a great buy long term. Yeah, so we talked about Power Rangers. We talked about our Draken New Dawn variant that we have on the site. We talked about the Seven Secrets that we also have a Jung Young Yoon variant for. We love both those covers. And I'm telling you right now, Seven Secrets is a series that we feel so great about. We talked about once in future, we've talked about something's killing children. We think this story kind of follows in that same, I won't say plot point or direction, but has that same type of feel when we read those books. So I will say, yes, we would love for you to buy our variant. But if you don't buy our variant, definitely when this book comes out next week and you can't get this think of variant that came out this week, pick copy A up, give it a read. I'm almost positive that you'll enjoy it. And if you enjoy number one, we were able to read an advanced issue number two and number two. <sighs> Gets even better. Way better than number one already. So we love this series and can't say enough good things about it. But if you want to support the channel and support us, definitely pick up that Seven Secrets of Jung Yun Yoon variant, $24.99, submenscomics.com, and the 616comics.com. But that being said, we're going to go now into Jack's long-term play. And this week for Jack's long-term play, he's going back to that Batman. We talked about this earlier, but we have Batman 96. Why is this your long-term play? Well, a lot of people are going to go, dude, Robin King. Yeah, I get it. But me talking to you today about Robin King doesn't help you out. Now, again, I don't feel that bad because we did talk to you about it a long time ago. So we tried to warn you that this was coming. But these long-term plays, I'm trying to give you an idea. If you walked into a comic shop today, you had nothing on a pull list, nothing pre-ordered and you're just looking at the shelf, what is the best long-term play with what you're looking at? I don't think you're going to find the, the Legends of the Dark Knight book too oftentimes just sitting on a wall for cover price. Um, I don't think you're going to find the incentive, certainly, for anything close to ratio. So I'm going to take that and really kind of eliminate that. If I eliminate that, I think what could benefit from that is I think Batman 96, an issue that probably would be the hottest issue of the week if we weren't talking Robin King, is going to get kind of totally overlooked. There's a great cover B for Matina. 
Um, I, I really like the Clown Hunter design variant. I think the Clown Hunter character is a character, anything related to the Joker tends to like do well. Um, I love the idea of somebody coming at the Joker. Um, I love the idea of somebody kind of equally as kind of crazy and unpredictable. And I would love to see where he will fit in or become an enemy of the Bat family. Will he become a Joker ally one day? Like, you don't know where this character could go. Now, I'll admit, if, we, if you've been burned by the designer, certainly this could be a character that Tinian only uses for this storyline. You could lose money on this. Now, here's the thing, though. We talk about lottery ticket, right, Brian? I don't think you're going to lose money on cover A or B either way, because I think that this Joker war story is going to be popular. People are going to be selling the story as sets. I think you're going to be okay. It's going to retain its value, at least at cover price. It's not going to be a dollar game book. Um, but if clown hunt, if you get buy the incentive and certainly if you buy the incentive at market price and you're hoping it's going to go up and then clown hunt dies three issues from now, um, certainly that would have changed you know, his name to clown hunted. Right. It were, well, you you can hunt the Joker all you want. Joker's going to hunt you back. So, you know, there's no doubt that uh, that battle is going to be brewing or punchline. Um, it's going to get messy. So the, I, I know there's a risk involved in this, but I just don't think you can point to Robin King um, at, at because, like I said, I just don't think that's a realistic piece of advice I can give you, the buying public, um, because if you really missed out, I will tell you, Pay attention to the last call show. Pay attention to wherever you buy your FOC comics from because I would look for that uh, Legends of the Dark Knight second print. Um, if, you, if you're comparing Robin King to Batman Who Laughs, the Batman Who Laughs second print is now like a $50 book, $60 book. And it was a dollar bin book for the longest time. So yes, it will be over overordered. Yes, it will be cover price for a long time. You'll curse me out for six months to a year and say, Jack, you made me buy this crap that's sitting in my short box. And then three years from now, you're going to be like, oh man, Jack, that was a good pick, but you won't give me that credit then. But either way, for that reason, that book, I really can't look at. I got to look at Batman. Um, and I think that we've been bullish on this Joker War story the whole time. There's no reason to stop now. So risk, yes. Um, but I think it's a book $3 that'll be a, risk. Yeah, it's a three dollar risk, and it's available today. Um, unlike, uh, you know, the Legends of the Dark Knight, where you're not finding that on shelves. I think most of you will be able to find Batman '96 cover A or B or both on your shelf at your LCS today. Yeah, and it all comes down to if you don't like his opinion, don't buy it. We always say buy what you like, right? Yes, we just absolutely. offer our opinions. Three dollar risk, whatever the cover price is for this book. Low buy-in, like we always say, it's the price of a lottery ticket. May or may not do anything, but that Joker War storyline's been fantastic. So you're getting your money's worth in the read alone. And if it appreciates, that's just the added benefit of it. And that's why it's a long-term play because there is risk in a long-term play. We don't have a crystal ball. We're just basing everything off our opinion. Whether you buy it or not, that's up to you. That's your money. Buy what you like. But it's a great long-term play, in my opinion. And we mentioned a couple of times in this video tonight about our last call, that final order cutoff show. We do want to mention that DC has just shifted their final order cutoff a day earlier, right? Normal final order cutoffs Monday night. I believe DC's now shifted theirs to Sunday night. That's right. And because, and we've heard from people um, that they maybe would like us to look at the scheduling of the last call show. That is something we will talk about um, our weekly schedule, but um, definitely want to let people know about that. We've been big proponents of, we don't like DC changing, trying to change new comic book day, go with whatever distributor you want. But I, I wish we could keep FOC the same day. I wish we could keep uh, new comic book day the same day, but uh, we'll play ball with what we're given. But there's the Bolo list. There's the Bolo show, guys. We appreciate you watching. Simple Man's Comics family, one of the best communities on YouTube and in comics. We love you guys. And this is Brian Jack from Simple Man's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video. Thinking you got me right where you want me. I tell a ghost as doctor. Sending them shots. We send them back. Young ain't really about that. Run. It's always bounce back. Need more hands just to count down. Stay on my belly. I need me more breeze just so we can get the team right.